Hey everyone, George here. I thought I'd come back today and uh, discuss with you my top 10 favorite Walt Disney World attractions. And this does not include, of course, Disneyland or anything like with the Disney Cruise Line. It's just Walt Disney World. I will do uh, some videos in the future on Disneyland and the Disney Cruises. Uh, but this is just the top 10 attractions for Walt Disney World. Um, not in any particular order. Maybe I'll do another video later on where I actually put them in order of, um, you know, how I like them from maybe like least to best. But this is just the top 10, no particular order. So we're going to count down. I'm going to start with number 10. And this is going in uh, the Magic Kingdom. And that is Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. And uh, this made my list. Uh, because, first of all, it's a roller coaster. I am a, a thrill junkie. I love roller coasters. I love all kinds of roller coasters. Um, but Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is a more of a family-type coaster. You know, you could take your young children on if you kind of want to get them started into, you know, the beginning phase of getting them used to roller coasters. That would be the perfect uh, ride to do so. And... Um, it's just great of theming. I love how it's, uh, you know, it's settled, nestled in the back of the park, uh, west side, uh, in uh, Frontierland, and because uh, it is the wildest ride in the wilderness, folks, <laughs> and it's I just love it. And I, you know, growing up as a child, it was one of my favorite rides uh, to go on, and then to have the privilege to take my son on it and watch him have that same excitement and thrill that I did when I was his age. It was, it's just great. Uh, counting down number nine. Um, now again, I said attractions, so it's not just rides. It's also, it could be like a type of, um, show or anything like a attraction based at Walt Disney World. So that, again, that brings me to number nine and staying in Frontierland, it's Country Bear Jamboree. And, um, with Country Bear Jamboree, it used to be out at Disneyland, uh, in Critter Country, and it was eventually replaced by, uh, the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, but it still resides in Walt Disney World at Frontierland, for all of you who want to, uh, go and see this classic Disney attraction. Um, it's about, like, a 15-minute, uh little audio animatronic show. Um, it's great that if you're trying to beat the Florida heat and stay out of the sun and cool down and take a break, then Country Bear Jamboree is uh, one of the best possibilities that you can do. And I just, I love the songs. I love the, the antics to it. There's a bit uh, risque points into the show that only adults would understand, but it's still great for the whole family. And uh, you got to love those uh, rootin' tootin' bears. <laughs> My favorite is um, uh, Al, Big Al. Uh, he's he's my favorite. But of course, I love Wendell and Liver Lips, and then you could also see the country bears around in that area. I mean, right now they're not doing any meet and greets, but you could visualize them up at the top balcony of the attraction, and uh, they'll uh, wave to you and greet you and everything. So that's my number nine. Number eight, moving on. Uh, to Animal Kingdom is Expedition Everest. And uh, again, if I was actually titling them of greatest to least or least to greatest, Expedition Everest would not be number eight. It would be done further in the bottom <laughs> uh, for my top favorites because uh, just like with Big Thunder Mountain, uh, Expedition Everest is also a uh, roller coaster, but much more um, complex than Big Thunder. Um, it has a lot of inner rock work and a lot of different um, layers, um, including the Yeti, for which right now that the Yeti isn't working as far as like the hydraulics of movement, but they have the Disco Yeti <laughs> going along. But uh, Walt well, Disney Imagineer Joe Rohde, who worked on the project and was ahead of that project team, that he promised us uh, fans that, you know, and the Yeti fans, that um, 
the Yeti will eventually be fixed, just not knowing when and how of the prospects of doing so. All right, moving on to number seven, staying in Animal Kingdom is Dinosaur. Now, I know a lot of people think that Dinosaur is just a Disneyland's Indiana Jones adventure knockoff, which, I mean, it has the same kind of ride vehicles, it has the same ride layout, the same track, everything, just a different skin, so to speak, a different uh, uh, storyline. But I love Dinosaur just to the fact of it, the thrill you get with it because it is pitch like it's it's dark you can't really see too much in there so for people who are just going on for the first time they don't know what to expect and especially when I ride it with my wife she's a, a big chicken so it, when it comes to that ride but she loves it she and it just the Carnotaurus scares her every single time and that to me I think is more exciting riding with her than just the actual ride experience for me myself because I can ride it all day every day and not really get affected by it but if she rides it every single time <laughs> so going to number six uh, going back to Magic Kingdom and that is the Carousel of Progress now the Carousel of Progress is a very unique attraction because it's a lot of people, you know, have that argument, it's a ride, it's a show. I kind of take it as both, really. It's it's pretty much a revolving uh, 360 theater um, that moves while you're watching it. And it takes you on this turn-of-the-century um, time period with a family, and they take you through the decades of how tomorrow comes and there's like different technology there's different ways of living and it becomes a great big beautiful tomorrow and it's definitely an attraction that despite that Walt Disney had not seen Walt Disney World uh completed unfortunately he died while it was still in the um processes of um uh getting built and everything I mean they didn't even start the the groundwork of construction before he died so but that attraction alone it has his fingerprints all over it so it's one of those pieces that I hope stays for a very long time I don't mind updates I really don't I don't mind them updating the attraction but the attraction needs to stay <laughs> okay and now moving on to number five right next to the carousel of progress in Tomorrowland is the Tomorrowland Transit Authority, or also known as the People Mover. Now, the People Mover is a very, kind of a simple attraction. It really doesn't have a type of um, genre of the attraction, so to speak, where it's titled as like a spinner ride or a roller coaster or a carousel, uh, Ferris wheel. It's like, it's not titled as a specific, it's more so just, it takes you through a tour of Tomorrowland and it takes you in through the inner workings of each attraction that's based on in there. And, you know, how the behind the scenes of like what it took to come up with the concept of Tomorrowland. Because Walt was all about moving forward, looking at the future, never looking back. And that ride kind of signifies of like where that land branched off of his imagination. And also it's a nice little ride up around Tomorrowland just to kind of sit back, relax and... It takes you on a little tour. I mean, what could be better than that, really? <laughs> Number five, moving over to Disney's Hollywood Studios, is the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. <laughs> um, I absolutely love this ride as a, as a kid. I was, like, literally on and off all the time. I'm a huge fan of the Twilight Zone to begin with. But to incorporate that into an attraction, a ride, a thrill ride, and at a Disney park. I mean, it like just meshed so well. And the way that they built the tower, that they built it in an angle, that it just, it's per it sits perfectly that as you approach uh, Sunset Boulevard, the section of Hollywood Studios where the ride resides, I mean, it's massive. You can see it. It's like the first thing you see when you pull up to Hollywood Studios. And it's like, okay, I'm ready for this. 
and you know it just takes you through the storylines of a, a basic an episode of the Twilight Zone, and just the thrill of you know that free fall sensation. I love it. I know a lot of people don't, but I absolutely love it. Moving on to number four. Yeah, I think it's four. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I'm kind of losing track here. Uh, moving on to number four, and it would be I'm trying to think of my list here. Well, it would be at again the Magic Kingdom, and it's another roller coaster. Um, and this one is a little bit more wilder than Big Thunder, but uh, less aggressive than Expedition Everest. It is a family coaster. It sits in Fantasyland as part of the new Fantasyland, uh, Fantasyland, uh, the Enchanted Forest, and that's the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. And this ride is very popular. It gets a lot of attention, big wait times, and the only disappointment that I have with the ride is it's very short. I wish the ride would have been a little bit longer, but just the notion of going through the mine and seeing the seven dwarfs, and as you climb that hill and you s start to hear them singing uh, hi-ho, and you're about to plunge out of the, the mine, and you twist and turn and drop and everything. I remember going on it for the first time uh, with my wife. It was at night. And uh, again, knowing how she is like with rides like that, and I, I was lucky enough I got her on because she's a bit hesitant of how to approach a ride until she actually knows what it's about. But And then to go on it at night and just watching her reaction, it's priceless. And at the very top, right before we dropped, we got to see the finale of Happily Ever After, so the fireworks above uh, Cinderella Castle. So that was not just experiencing the ride for the first time, but to see that view, and it was like a perfect way to end our day at the Magic Kingdom. Moving on to number three, and I'm going to move over to Epcot, because that's one of the parks I didn't get to yet. <laughs> and um, this attraction is, believe it or not, I was very surprised, is the Frozen attraction, Frozen Ever After. And this ride had taken the place of Maelstrom, and I was a fan of Maelstrom. Um, I wasn't like super uber excited about it, but I mean, I enjoyed it. But I loved how they re-themed it to Frozen, and I loved the notion of going backwards as Elsa's singing Let It Go, and you see all the effects and the animatronics and that final little, little mini drop down at the end when you uh, encounter Marshmallow, uh, the giant abominable uh, snowman type creature that Elsa created. So it's, it's a cute little ride, and but I actually enjoyed it as as um, the, all the rides at Epcot. That's one of my uh, favorites. And uh, moving on to number two, um, actually staying in Epcot, that um, would be Living with the Land. Now, this attraction is something that you would think is very educational, you know, for kids. It's like, oh, it's boring. You know, I don't want to learn about hydroponic plants and how they grow fruits and vegetables, but it is a very enjoyable boat ride, and it is somewhat educational to the fact of that you get to see how they grow the fruits and vegetables and plants for Walt Disney World and their restaurants that they use everything, and just, like, how things go, and it's... It's one of those things that don't knock it until you try it and then make your decision, but I absolutely love that attraction. I actually enjoy that a little more than Frozen Ever After, but that one is probably, honestly, out of all the attractions at Epcot, now that I think of it, that one would be my top one, believe it or not. And before I get to number one, I'm, I just have a few honorable mentions. They didn't make my top ten, but it's not that I didn't ever enjoy them or had a bad experience it's just there's so many great attractions um that are part of walt disney world that i just picked my top 10 and believe it or not my 10 has changed as years go on as they add things and they change things 
my top 10 constantly changes. So I may have to do an update, <laughs> you know, in the near future when they change things, because I'm for sure I'm going to be adding uh, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Rewind, and of course Tron uh, Light Cycle uh, Coaster to this list eventually. So, But my number one is actually a tie. And I can't choose between these two because they both give something that the other can't offer, if that makes sense. And one is at Magic Kingdom, and the other is at Animal Kingdom. So I will start with the Animal Kingdom, and that is Flight of Passage, based off of uh, James Cameron's 2009 blockbuster film Avatar. And I tell you, I enjoy um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Stop me. Rewind. <laughs> I forgot to give my honorable mentions first. My honorable mentions are uh, the Grand Fiesta Tour starring the Three Caballeros uh, at Epcot in the Mexico Pavilion, Spaceship Earth, um, Space Mountain, Star Tours, and Cali River Rapids. Oh, and also Kilimanjaro Safari. So, yeah, practically everything else at Walt Disney World is an honorable mention, to be honest with you. Um, so I apologize. Yeah, because I said I was going to give my honorable mentions, and I just moved right in there, didn't I? So kind of going back, yes, my first one of the top one is uh, Flight of Passage. That with this attraction, it a lot of people call it Soarin' 2.0. But to me, that's a little bit of an insult because until you actually go on this attraction, for me, it is nothing like Soren. With Soren, you do feel like you're in the moment, but you still feel that notion that you are, okay, I'm just up perched looking into a screen that is moving, sort of like a, um, like a planetarium type of attraction where with flight of passage you literally feel you are moving you feel this creature that you're riding on the banshee that it's breathing you feel its heartbeat you feel the the mist and the wind i mean you literally do not feel like you're looking at a screen and i thought that's what it was going to be because that's all i was going on was a soaring 2.0 but until you actually go on it it's very hard to describe but for that to be my top one is pretty much saying it because I saved that one last on purpose because that really is, as of right now, one of my number ones. And uh, my second number one is actually my number one. I will always put these two together because I can't really put one as a number one or a number two. This one for me is an all-American classic Disney attraction, <laughs> so to speak. Um, it wasn't a Ron during Walt's time, but I still put it in the category of um, those classic attractions that stand the test of time and um, has great music, great characters, great storyline, great ride. And it's also, as I said, at the Magic Kingdom, back at Frontierland, it is, yes, you guessed it, Splash Mountain. And I know right now a lot of people have like mixed feelings about Splash Mountain just during like because of the timing of um, what's going on in the world today and how people like really feel about those kind of things. Um, but just as the attraction, taking all the other kind of controversy out, just speaking of the ride, not talking about anything that the ride is affiliated with the 1946 film Song of the South, which it is but I'm just talking about the attraction itself. I love the storyline of Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, and Br'er Bear, and how they try to catch Br'er Rabbit, and he thinks that the grass is greener on the other side, and he's in search of his laughing place, and he ends up getting caught by Br'er Fo uh, Fox, and, and you're on this journey with him, and it has like great songs of uh, zippity doo -dah and the, uh, everybody's got a laughing place, and how do you do, and it, it just it's very catchy and it gives you a good feeling and it's a pretty lengthy um 
attraction. It's about an 11 minute ride, so you definitely get your your wait time worth um, waiting for the ride. Now, um, in the near future, Disney is going to be retheming Splash Mountain um, to the Princess and the Frog. And as much as I love the attraction, I will miss it. I really will. I'll always see it as the original Splash Mountain. But I am very excited and optimistic about what Disney will do. Because with a classic attraction like Splash Mountain, I know that they won't disappoint us. And giving us a great um, attraction with... Um, uh, the Princess and the Frog because they uh, the movie soundtrack alone has great music so it'll definitely carry all the way through um, the attraction so I look forward to that in the, the future so that is my top 10 favorite Walt Disney World attractions as I said I will probably have to be uh, updating it in the future as more and new attractions come along on the horizon and uh, I will be making more videos, but maybe even doing like a top 10 Disneyland. And um, uh, it wouldn't be a top 10 like for the Disney Cruise Line, but I can give you my perspective of how I feel about each ship. And um, yeah, so we'll talk about that uh, later on. So uh, I thank you for joining me. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment down below. Uh, if you agree with me with my top 10, if you don't, I love to hear from you. Um, maybe if, even if you want to give me your top 10 and see how we can uh, compare. <laughs> so uh, thank you for joining me. And remember, stay healthy, stay safe, stay Disney. Bye, everyone.